So I want you guys to get absolutely nuts. The final comic, put your hands together for Eric Anthony. After 35 years of marriage, my parents are getting a divorce. It gets worse. <laughs> They're kicking me out of the house. <laughs> I am too old to start over. I asked my fiance, I'm engaged. That's where you clap, not laugh. I asked my fiance if I could move in, if we could be roommates before we married. And she said, Eric, please stop creating fake Facebook accounts to message me. I broke up with you a month ago. Bitch. I'm staying busy. I have an ACDC cover band. It's called OCDC. We play all the hits three or four times or until I feel like the world won't collapse underneath me. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. My job, my job keeps me pretty busy. I, uh, I love my job. I get to travel all over Austin selling weed. <laughs> From the slums of Manchaca <laughs> to the Round Rocks of Round Rock. I recently rescued a dog, because that's what you do when you get broken up with. I am a good person. And I had, this is my first dog I've ever rescued, and I was terrified. I was scared, because I think anyone who rescues a dog has a similar fear. You don't know this animal. You don't know its upbringing. Will this dog be a racist? You have no idea. They're not going to tell you when you adopt them. They're not going to be like, she's a husky German shepherd. She wants the wall built. And she doesn't believe in the Holocaust. She's the perfect dog. No. I have no idea. One of some old Japanese man trained her to hate Cambodians. I don't even know if that's a real racial issue. She's a German shepherd. One of a white supremacist taught her on the cue of the N-word to take a hard sit and high paw to Hitler. <laughs> I don't know, and I'll never know because I'm a good person. And I don't say the N-word loud enough for anyone to hear me. <laughs> I haven't had a dog since I was a little boy. It's been a while, and I love her. But it's so different. And the most different thing is now you have to pick up their poop? What? You have to pick up your dog's shit? I'm not picking up her shit, dude. When I was a kid and your dog pooped in the yard, you just didn't go over there anymore. <laughs> it ceased to exist. You wrote it down in your notes. You're like, I'm not playing at that swing set, dude. Now they got these cheap plastic bags. My hand rips through it every time. I get shit all over my hands. It gets caked underneath my finger now. I forget to wash my hands. It's an ordeal. Girls, let me get the bar shaking hands and signing autographs after my set. I started watching Game of Thrones. I know I'm late. I know any Game of Thrones fans here. So I don't even have to explain what it is or not is. All right. So I watched that show and I fucking love that show. 
But all I think about is, would I survive in that time period? And I know I look like I belong <laughs> in that time. I know I look super tough. And I am really fucking tough, dude. <laughs> you better agree. But everyone takes things so seriously. And you have to defend your family's honor at a moment's notice. I just imagine I'm at a, a pub. I'm drinking mead, right? And some guy comes up to me and he pulls a sword out. I don't have to make the noise. You know what the fucking sword sounds like. <laughs> and he goes, Eric, your mom's a fat cunt. She is kind of a bitch. <laughs> and she's gaining all that weight because, well, winter's coming. <laughs> Defend my family. Half my family is from Florida. I'm not defending shit. <laughs> you know those, those businesses or those stores that their motto is here? We treat you like family. I'm not shopping there. Well, you're gonna treat me like family? You're gonna borrow three hundred dollars and then never pay me back? <laughs> and then sexually harass my neighbor? Or you gonna be like my third cousin, Cassie, who lied about the abortion she promised she would get? <laughs> guys, guys, this is a comedy show. She got the abortion. Thank you.